Hi, I'm Simon. Thanks for tuning in to The Ordinary Filmmaker. If you're new here, subscribe to get notification of new videos like this one so you don't miss any news, rumors, or tutorials. And by the way, I'm giving away a brand new Canon EOS R5 full frame mirrorless camera to one lucky viewer. Details are in the description down below, or you can watch this video here, but essentially all you have to do is subscribe for your chance to win. I published a review of the Angelbird 2TB CF Express card last month. I said that the Angelbird works well when traveling for fun and gun work, where you want to keep your kit simple and keep the weight down. I said that external recorders like the Ninja 5 work well for short films, long shoots, studio work, for scenarios where you don't have to spend a lot of time transferring and converting video files. The Ninja 5 external recorder uses better compression codecs, delivering better quality files with more color data than standard camera codecs, which is really good for grading. It provides useful tools like waveforms, histograms, false color, and the ability to load LUTs on a larger screen. But most importantly, it saves an awful lot of time in post. This review provides a high-level summary of the Ninja's capabilities, the outcomes you can expect, and how it can improve your workflow and business productivity. This isn't a deep dive into the Ninja 5's functions. I'll use these capabilities to measure how well the Atomos Ninja 5 external recorder performs. I'll clearly define each capability and what outcomes you can expect. I'll apply colors to indicate how well a given capability is performed. Green means the Ninja 5 delivers the capability very well. Red means it performs it poorly or not at all. And yellow, well, it means it's good or somewhere in between. Video quality measures the ability of the Ninja 5 to provide detailed video with fewer artifacts right off your camera sensor. So if you've got an AA filter, no problem. You're getting the video feed right off the sensor before any AA filter is applied. The Ninja 5 provides 4K 10-bit video up to 60 frames per second with 422 chroma subsampling. Now for some cameras, these higher resolution and frame rates are only possible with an external recorder. For others like the Canon R5 or the Sony a7S III, you're just not going to be able to capture high resolution and high refresh rates like 4K 120 or 8K with the Ninja. A big benefit of using the Ninja 5 is video quality. While the Ninja 5 won't give you capabilities your camera doesn't already have, it will provide more detail in your camera supported resolutions and frame rates. You get to record with higher quality codecs like Avid's HDHR and Apple's ProRes, You'll also have fewer compression artifacts and better color precision, which is excellent for editing. Codex measures the compression quality available through multiple supported codecs. Now, most cameras do support H.264 and the newer H.265. Some further limit quality with interframe codecs like IPB. The Ninja 5 captures content in much higher quality video compression formats. You can record in Apple ProRes RAW, 422, HQ, and LT. And for Avid's DNHR, you get 220X, 220, 145, and 36. I have the Canon R5. I shoot in 4K HQ most of the time to get the best quality possible. But the native video formats aren't the easiest to edit. ProRes 422 edits so much faster whether you have a Mac, Windows, or Linux. It takes me about 30 minutes to convert an hour of 4K video to ProRes, and after spending about 10 minutes transferring the content to my Mac. Now with the Ninja 5, I recently recorded a 90 minute video. It's about 8% larger than recording with all I. There was no transfer delay, no time needed to convert to ProRes. The files were ready to edit right off the SSD. Now you can shoot in ProRes HQ or LQ if you want smaller file sizes, or you can shoot with better quality codecs like ProRes HQ or RAW. But for my workflow, I found that ProRes 422 works best. Being able to record in Apple ProRes or Avid HDHR is a huge time saver, and that alone is enough to justify the purchase of the Ninja 5. Monitor measures the ability of the Ninja 5 to allow us to preview what the end product will look like while shooting. The Ninja 5 delivers 1,000 nits and provides a hood to prevent glare. The larger 5-inch screen allowed me to monitor video clearly. You can see the edges of the frame and position the camera exactly where it's needed. The same can't be said for the small 3-inch screen. Now, yeah, I, I'm probably going to get some comments on this. The problem isn't with the camera's LCD, but with my eyes. I'm 50, I'm, my eyesight isn't the best, so this larger 5-inch screen allows me to position the camera in seconds. 
Want to see what log footage looks like? Grade it? No problem. Load your LUT into the Ninja 5 to show you what graded footage looks like. I've tossed out a lot of footage this year. I review everything through my camera's LCD. Exposure looks great, focus looks great, and the brightness levels look good too. But in post, things look different. I've tossed out a lot of footage all too often. Have you ever done this? Let me know about your nightmare scenarios in the comments below. But as I've said when I reviewed the Desview external monitor, being able to see clearly what the camera sees helps you get it right the first time. The larger 5-inch screen makes a huge difference along with the added tools not found in most cameras. Tool measures the ability of the Ninja 5 to provide focusing, exposure, color and other supporting functions to enable accurate live monitoring while recording to help you get it right the first time. The Ninja 5 comes with a lot of tools to help you shoot it right the first time. You get the Luma waveform, and I really wish the R5 had a waveform. It really helps you ensure you're exposed properly, and it's so much more useful to video than a histogram alone. You can see where in the frame you're under or overexposed. It also comes with an RGB parade, a vector scope, and even gives you the ability to zoom in on the vector scope. Very handy indeed. Not all of us have great eyes. And it comes with focus peaking, highlighting what's in focus, and zebras to show us exposure levels from 50 IRE. You can apply a false color and apply your own LUT. If the idea of an external recorder is new to you, and this seems a little bit too advanced, it's not. I've never used an external recorder before this review. Setup was pretty much a snap. Simply pick your record codec. Use the Zebra and Luma waveform to see that you're exposed properly and focus peaking to ensure that your subject isn't focused and leave the rest for another day. Don't try to understand everything at once. Play around with it. After shooting for a few days, it became second nature to me. Oh, and one more thing. Sorry to interrupt myself with myself, but there's one technicality I need to share with you and failure to do so could result in hours of frustration. If you own the Canon R5, you want to set the legalize function to on at all times. The R5 outputs C-Log in full range, but the Ninja 5 expects legal range by default. I'm not going to do a Gerald Undone deep dive into the technicalities of what this means. Suffice it to say, enabling legalization will match the Ninja 5's recording with the results you'd expect when recording C-Log internally. Now to permanently enable the legalize option, the HDMI HDR auto function in your input menu needs to be disabled. Once that's done, you don't need to re-enable Legalize after every boot up. Uninterrupted recording is the ability to record continuously without interruption from artificial limits, overheating limits, or loss of power. By using the Ninja 5 external recorder, I no longer have to worry about the 30 minute record limit imposed due to expired European legislation. Or maybe you have the Canon R5, R6, or a Sony with overheat limitations. Recording directly to the Ninja 5 SSD makes overheating concerns a thing of the past for most scenarios on most cameras, as the camera has far less processing to do. In fact, processing is much reduced, or so much reduced, that I was able to get an extra 33% of battery life on my R5 to last just under three hours. That's pretty good. For most recording sessions, a SATA SSD is more than fast enough, but they're not cheap. I recommend the Angelbird Mini SSD as they fit flush with the Ninja 5. You can also purchase a Samsung Evo SSD. But whatever you do, don't go with anything like a Samsung Qvo SSD because they just don't have the right speech and you're going to run into problems. You also want to do a low level format before recording. I made the mistake of not doing so and the result was, well, a broken up recording. Whenever possible, format your storage before every use. But the real productivity gain? Well, that comes from editing right off the SSD. You don't have any time wasted transferring, converting, or transcoding to slow you down. It really is a huge time saver. For a lot of my videos and improves editing, I can't stress this point enough. That, and not having to worry about your camera stopping during a shoot is a huge distraction that's eliminated. Storage measures the ability to easily record events for hours in high quality video modes, cost effectively, while saving time in post. A Samsung Evo 2TB can be had for $250, while a 4TB SSD can be had for around $533. Or you can get the Angelbird Atom X 2TB Mini for $549, which is designed specifically to fit the Ninja 5 without sticking out at the end. 
and they happen to be considerably cheaper than the larger capacity CF Express cards. When I was a kid, I had posters of exotic cars on my bedroom wall. I imagined their speed, agility, and dominance over other cars, and dreamed, dreamed of driving them and perhaps even owning one someday. The Lamborghini Countach was one, the Ferrari 308 was the other. The Countach, from the looks alone, was enough to warrant prime real estate on my bedroom wall. But in reality, the gear shifter felt like it was from a garden tractor, you couldn't see out of the back window to park properly, and the climate control would leave you in a puddle of sweat. The Ferrari fared better. I was a big fan of the TV show Magnum PI, and at the time, Thomas Magnum was driving around in the Ferrari 308. One lucky day, while I was in college, I got a chance to drive my dream car. Now, I'll admit, it was amazing. Um, I was Magnum for 10 minutes. But riding around for 10 minutes in the car and owning it are two different things. It's very temperamental. If you don't let it warm up right, you could end up pushing a rod through the block. Now, since I got the Canon R5, I had dreamed of owning the Ninja 5. But I was afraid that, like meeting my car heroes, it would be less than I had hoped, plagued with hidden issues and caveats that we don't see in a lot of reviews, that it would be too complicated, a pain in most scenarios, and the promise of recording and editing off the SSD? Well, it would have lots of issues too. I was wrong. For long recordings of 20 minutes or more, studio work, commercial use, the Ninja 5 is an essential, or it's, it's just a, it's an essential productivity tool. Monitor your scene to get the exposure, color, and focus bang on to reduce the impact of reshoots. Record high quality video directly off the sensor without any AA filter or in-camera processing. Record using high precision codecs like Avid or ProRes to get the best color precision and detail. But the biggest impact to your workflow is the sheer time savings. I produce a weekly question and answer video and I normally shoot about 90 minutes of video for each session. Transferring to my Mac takes about 10 or 15 minutes, but that can easily jump to 40 minutes if I accidentally record to an SD card, and yes, it's happened many times. Something about the R5, even though you tell it to record to the CF Express card, every now and then it decides, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and put it on the SD card. Now, converting to ProRes, well, that could take up to 40 minutes, and exporting took another 60 minutes. Now, by editing right off the SSD, the transfer time is eliminated. Being able to record ProRes 422 eliminates the conversion time and makes editing so much quicker. Plus, the export time is reduced to 30 minutes because Final Cut now has time to render while I work, saving me an additional 30 minutes. That's huge. This reason is reason alone enough to justify getting the Ninja 5 external recorder. It won't take you more than a week to get a positive return on investment. And if your computer's slower than mine, your performance gains will be even better. But before signing off, if you're going to buy the Ninja, get the right gear. Buying the base package won't give you everything you need unless you have a well-established shop with batteries, chargers, and cables. If you are starting out, I recommend getting the Ninja 5 kit. The base package is $599 and won't be enough. The kit comes with the Ninja 5, a 1TB Angelbird SSD, 2NP F570 batteries, a battery charger, power supply, and an SSD caddy needed to dock with your computer so you can edit right off the SSD. This comes to $1199. Should you already have most of the accessories? Well, that's where $599 comes in. And if you're interested, please use my Amazon or b &H links below. The Atomos Ninja 5 is a great tool, but make sure it fits your scenarios. If you shoot a lot of video clips and photos and need to get the data off your camera quickly without adding gear, weight, or complexity to your shooting, well consider a CF Express card like the ProGrade Cobalt 325 card. They're expensive, but their speed can't be matched, and it really helps you keep the weight down without any added complexity or attachments. Now, if you're traveling a lot for fun and gun work, uh, you're not concerned about the speed, but need to keep the complexity and weight down as well, you might want to consider the 2TB or 4TB Angelbird butt. Shoot a lot of interviews, event work, or studio work, commercial work where high quality content matters, where your time matters most of all, the Atomos Ninja 5 can't be beat. For most content creators, the Ninja 5 will pay for itself within a week easy, maybe even a day depending on your charge rate. Oh, and one last thing, make sure you set your camera sleep mode to disabled when connected to the Ninja 5. I have a special custom mode for this and it prevents me from having to get up and set it because the Ninja 5 stops getting a feed after a little while. 
But that's it for now. Don't forget to subscribe for your chance to win the Single Lab S6E and M3 shotgun microphones. I'll be awarding this prize to one lucky viewer once the channel reaches 20,000 subscribers. And I'll offer up a different, more expensive prize every 10,000 subscribers until the channel reaches 100,000. At which point, I'll be giving away a brand new Canon EOS R5 full-frame mirrorless camera to one lucky viewer. And on that bombshell, thanks for watching The Ordinary Filmmaker. We'll see you again soon.